Hello everybody and welcome to my video tutorial on introduction to computer programming using Python part 1. This is the fourth class in the series, Python variables, simple data types and operators. My name is Innocent Okoloku. The objective of the class today is to learn about the different kinds of data available to work in Python programs to learn how to use variables to represent data in programs to learn about operators the motivation is as future Python programmers a thorough understanding of data types and their representation as variables or constants is a basic required foundation for understanding programming in any language actually not just Python Another basic foundation is an understanding of the various operators available in a language, something called operators, like in arithmetic. So at the end of this class, participants should be able to explain what is data, what is variable, what is a constant, and be able to differentiate between them should be able to create variables and constants of different data types in Python should be able to describe the various operators available in Python should be able to write Python programs to create and display variables and constants of different simple data types should be able to perform some basic string operations built into Python so the contents we will see the features of a python program we will learn what data is what is data we will learn about variables constants constants versus variables in python rules for using variables string data type python string operations we will talk about the case operation. We will learn about the F strings operation, white spaces operations. Then we'll look at numeric data types, Boolean data types, Python operators, comments, and the Zen of Python. The features of a Python program. A Python program could contain the following variables, constants, both of which form the data in a program, in fact in any programming language. Variables and constants make up the data. There can also be comments, which we have learned about before actually, expressions, operators, keywords, now let's look at data. So what is data? The definition I have here is taken from the Cambridge English Dictionary. It says data is information, especially facts or numbers, collected to be examined and considered and used to help decision making or information in an electronic form that can be stored and used by a computer. Of course, this is what data is. So, in programming, data is an essential part of any programming language, including Python. How do we represent data in Python? It can be represented as variables or constants as we have seen before. I must state it now, at this early stage, that Python does not have a concept of constants, but as a computer programmer, you should know about constants. There is a way that Python programmers represent constants. And that is why we are going to also learn about constants, including variables in this class. How do Python programmers do that? Types of data or data types in Python. We have string data type, numeric data type, Boolean data type, list, tuple, set, dictionary. First of all, what is a variable? 
A variable is a place or container in the computer memory reserved to store data. It is called variable from the English pronunciation or the English meaning because the data stored can change. It can vary with time anywhere within the program. Data can also be of any type. It could be a string, it could be numeric, it could be boolean, a list, etc. We will see all of them one by one as we go. Now let's consider variables like this. You have uh, several containers, various containers in your kitchen for example, or in your garage for example, which you store different kinds of items. For example, you have a salt container, you have a pepper container, you have another container for storing vegetable oil or different kinds of oil. In your garage you might have a container for storing petrol, another one for storing natural gas, another one for storing diesel or kerosene or whatever you store, engine oil. So what you put into the container is data. The container itself is the variable. It is a place reserved in com computer memory where you can now put the type of item you normally put there. You do not put kerosene in your salt container in the kitchen. You only put salt there. Now, why is it a variable? The amount of salt you put in, into the container can change with time. Sometimes it is full. Sometimes it is empty. You fill it up. You use it. The volume is gradually decreasing with time. And then when it's totally empty, you fill it again. That's a variable. It's not different from what happens in the computer memory. So consider that the SD card in your phone is the computer memory. The volume of data you have inside it is not constant. It's always varying. That's what you mean by a variable. So let's look at the program to see how we can create variables in Python. We call this program variables.py. The main program begins here. So we say string var. What we are seeing here is the variable declaration or the creation of the variable. It could be any name you call it. Later on we'll learn the proper way to create variable names. But let's just start with this one. We say string var equal to hello world. String var is a string variable. So you can think of as many string variables as possible. String variables are like statements or words or variables that contain the alphabets mixed together with numbers. Your surname is, is a string variable. Your first name is a string variable. The name of your car is a string variable. The number of your car is a string variable. So on and so forth. And then we say int var, numeric integer variable. Int var is equal to 123. So a numeric integer variable is a whole number variable. For instance, your age, the number of people in your family, the population of a city. You can think of more, whole number variables. Then we have the flute var. I just call it float var but it's called it's a numeric float variable. So this kind of variable is the one that contains decimal numbers. For instance your height might be 1 point something meters, 2 point something meters. The amount of petrol in your tank could be 20.5 liters or something like that. There is another kind of variable called complex numeric variable, complex numeric variable. If you have done complex variable or complex analysis in mathematics, you will understand this. But if you don't, there's nothing to worry about. So the complex variable consists of a flute part and the complex part or imaginary part. Then there is the boolean variable, bool var. The value is either true or false. It can only be two values. Either boulevard is true, or whatever you call it here is true, or it is false. We call it boolean variable. And this is very important because the computer is a logical machine. In fact, the whole design of computer from the scratch is based on the boolean algebra. 
yes or no, zero or one, true or false. So we have a more complex variable here, which is a list variable. In fact, this is the most commonly used variable. So you see this list, just like the, the name states, it's a list of something, a list of students, a list of people in the city, list of cars on the street, so on and so forth. So this list variable contains different types. We see it, we see about list in more detail as we go. So let me not talk much about it here, but you can see it contains a lot of different data types. It contains a string, another string, an integer, a float, and a boolean, all together in one complex variable. So you can just print out the variables like this. Print string var, print int var, print float var, print complex var, print bool var, print list var. So now I'm going to leave the presentation view so that I can copy the codes and run it in Visual Studio Code. I press escape on the keyboard and here I am. So I will click and drag all of this, press Ctrl C on the keyboard. Now I'll come to Visual Studio Code and I will say file, new file, select Python and just Ctrl V to paste. So we can save the file as python variables.py. File save as. Look for a directory to store it, a directory that you have created to store the file and make sure the name of the file is a descriptive name that you have given to it. So you can just say variables and click save. I already have the file before. Now if you see that the name of your file is not white it means there are still some errors. When, Whenever we copy and paste like this there can be some errors because of the copying. So here is our program. The one I just explained in the PowerPoint presentation. Now I'm going to run it. First of all let me show the ARAPL window on this side. We can run it and see the output on the terminal or we can just modify the file and see the output in ARAPL. Right. So you can see on the right the, the output. Hello world. Int virus 1 to 3. Float vice 1.23, bull uh, complex vice what we have here, the bull vice true, and this is the list var. So it's not only via AR, AREPL that you can run the file, you can actually run the file and see the terminal and see the output on the terminal. And you are going to see that the output you get in the terminal is the same as the output that you get in ARAPL. So this is what we have. If you don't understand how we got to this position where we can run the file and see the output here, you have to go to the first videos and see how we set up the Visual Studio Code environment and install all the extensions we need and see uh, examples that actually show you what to do in order to get to this stage. So now that we know that the program is running, so I'll continue from the next slide. So the screen you are seeing here is the output from the Visual Studio Code that we just ran. It's the same output. It's just that the color is changed here so that if you are printing it, you don't have to spend a lot of ink printing a very dark background. So we can see the output on this side. Let's progress from here. Now let's talk about constants. Like I said before, Python has no constants. But as a computer programmer, aspiring computer programmer, you must learn about constants. You need to understand them. And how do we do them in Python? So what is a constant? A constant is also a place contained in the computer memory reserved to store data. However, you don't want the data you stored in a constant to change. 
Not like your salt container that you can keep using until it's finished. Let me use an analogy to explain the concept of constants. It may not be the perfect analogy. There are some containers you don't want to be half empty. You want them to be full all the time. You don't want their volume to change. Whenever the volume is changing, you want to fill it up. For example, the tires of your car or your bike. You want them to be constant as much as possible. The volume of air in them or gas in them, whatever. You want them to be constant as much as possible. Moreover, there are times you are creating a program and you want some names to be constant. If somebody is the owner of a company, for example, and you are creating a program, and in that program you want to represent the name of the owner of the company, you don't want to create that kind of data using a variable. You want to use a constant. Though he may not be the owner of the company forever, I don't know what happens if he dies or something. He may still be the owner. So such kind of data, you want them to remain constant. There are also some mathematical constants that are in the books. You can change them. For example, pi, 22 over 7. Think about other mathematical constants that must not be changed. Such kind of data, you keep them in constant, not in variables. So, let's see how we can do that in Python, even though Python does not have a way of creating constants. So, what do Python programmers do? The constant names are created in capital letters with some underscores to connect them if need be. So, we say string const or string constant or whatever you want to call it equal to hello world. int constant, integer constant, numeric constant, float const, numeric float constant, complex const, bool const, list const, you can create it just like this. So we can print out the constants just like the way we printed out the variables. Okay. Now, if you copy this code to the Visual Studio code and run it, this is the output that you are going to get in ARAPL. So, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm going to repeat this thing for emphasis again. Python has no way of declaring constants, unlike C, C++, or Java where there are actual facilities for creating constants which the program understands and a user cannot change it inadvertently not like python so the ones we just created in the program we saw before because python doesn't have the, the facility it will still regard them as variables in fact somebody can change it and python will not complain visual studio code will not complain for C or C++ constant, there is something called a const keyword. Const. You declare the constant as a const. So when you say my norm is equal to 15, it will never change. You cannot change it by mistake or by error anywhere in the program. If, you, if at any other point in the program you try to assign a value, it will flag an error. Same as Java. In Java, final is used to indicate constant. So if we say pi equal to 3.146, you can never equate pi to any other thing anywhere else in the program. Not even to 3.146, which is the original number you put there. Don't ever equate it to anything again. It will tell you of an error. So, what do we Python programmers do from Python programmer to Python programmer? If you intend to create a constant and you want another programmer who is reading the program or you want to remind yourself that what I created here should be a constant and not a variable, you use caps. That's why we use caps. Okay? 
So that is from Python programmer to Python programmer. If someone else or you make a mistake and try to assign a different value, you are going to get a logical error. So this program is now to show that Python does not really have a way of creating constants by itself. So we say string var is a string variable. We created a string variable. Then we want to create a string constant. Hola mundo. We create an integer variable and we want to create an integer constant. If you print the data, string var, string const, int var, int const, everything will be printed out the way it is. Now, if you try to change the data, maybe you forgot, or someone else doesn't know it's supposed to be a string constant. So, string var, we can change it straightforward. Bonjour Monday. Then we assign another value to something we intended to be a constant. We say the same string const over here again. We are making another assignment and say hello Welt. Even though it should not be changed because it was intended to be a constant, Python does not know about that. It's going to change it. There will be no error. If you print it, you will see that Python does not flag an error like C or C++ or Java. Okay? So let's look at the output. As you can see from the output here, hello vert was actually accepted. So the concept of constant actually does not exist in Python. But as Python programmers, you have already learned how you can declare constants in your program if you so intend. Okay, let's progress from here. Now, there are some rules for creating variables. You have to follow the syntax of the language you are using, which is in Python. Rules for naming and using variables in Python. So, I will give you the rule. I will give you a good example, one or more, and I'll give you some bad examples also that you should not do. First rule. Variable names can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. They can start with a letter or an underscore, but never with a number. Never start a variable name with a number. A good example is, or three good examples. The first one is underscore name. Underscore name. All together, no space. The second one is first name underscore name two. Very good. It ended with a number, but should never begin with a number. The last one is last names underscore. Even though you are seeing the underscore in the three examples, doesn't mean that you must always have an underscore in a variable name. It's just to, to show where an underscore can be and where a number should be and not be in a variable. Let's look at bad examples. Three bad examples. Five name. This will flag an error, certainly. First name star. This is a special character. Last name. This is also a special character. So those are bad examples. Never do those. Another rule is spaces are not allowed in variable names. But as you can see, we can use underscore to separate words. Good examples. Greeting message. This is good underscore greeting underscore message this is also good greeting message the space in between python doesn't understand that and this space is also bad avoid using python keywords and function names as variables because they are reserved for a purpose for example we have been using print we have been using import we have, you will see a lot, a plethora of Python keywords in the book we are using, the book of Eric Matthews, page 41. In fact, if you go to Google and type Python keywords, I'm sure you will see more of them there. Make sure you don't use any one of them in your program as a variable name. Now, as an advice, variable names should be short but descriptive. 
For example, a good example, name makes meaning. It makes meaning to the person who is reading the program, you who wrote the program. Student name, this also makes meaning. Name length also makes meaning. Bad examples. You want to declare a name and you just say N. SN. Length of persons' names. Even though these bad examples will not flag errors in your program, nevertheless, they are not descriptive of the information you are trying to store in this variable. It's like you have uh, some containers in your garage and you cannot differentiate between which one is diesel, which one is petrol, which one is kerosene or whatever. It, it can result in a dangerous situation. So avoid them. As an advice, be careful when using the lowercase letter L and the uppercase letter O because they could be easily confused with the numbers 1 and 0 in your programs. Okay? If you can follow these rules, you are on the way to creating excellent variables in Python. So, concentrate on making variable names in lowercase because the uppercase letters have special meanings as we've seen before whenever Python programmer intends to create a constant data type they use uppercase letters avoid errors when typing variables this is one of the areas where you get errors in your program a lot so be careful normally if you are using something like Visual Studio Code an editor like Visual Studio Code it is going to give you a traceback error and show you where the error occurred. So a name error usually means we either forgot to set a variable's value before using it or there has been a spelling mistake. For example, so we say message equal to hello world. But when we wanted to print, we said print message. These are very common errors typographical error message there is a single s in the print and the original variable name is a double s so you get an error this is the output of a program the good thing with using visual studio code is that it is going to detect the error and it is going to point you to where the error is in fact it's going to tell you what the error is and point you to where the error is so let's begin to talk about data types. We'll begin with the string data type because it is very common. What is a string? Strings are continuous sequences of character enclosed within single or double quotation marks, sometimes including spaces. For example, this is a string. See, it is enclosed in double quotes, like a reported statement. This is also a string, single quotes. I told my friend I love Python, single quotes on the outside, reported speech, I love Python, double quotes on the inside. This can also be reversed. The language Python is named after Monty Python, not the snake double quotes on the outside single quotes on the inside one of python's strengths is its diverse supportive community single quote the data type is represented under the str class str which is a short form for string so the people who created Python to enable you to be able to create string variables in Python, they needed to create a program called a class that represents the string. We will learn about classes later on in the course, so don't worry about them for now. How do we represent strings in Python? Single line strings, all the examples we've seen above are single line strings 
which are enclosed in single or double quotes, but all of them are written on a single line. There is also multi-line strings, which we've not seen an example. So multi-line strings are strings that are enclosed in triple single quotes and they are written over multiple lines. Now let's see an example. We call this program str type for short form for string type and the main program begins here. We start by declaring our first string, string var1 equal to this is a single line string another string string var2 this is also a single line string string var3 this is a multi-line string and then we close using triple single quotes so this is an example of a multi-line string print the data so we we'll print string var1 print string var2 print string var3 we may also want to know what is the type type of string van one print it so if you run this program in visual studio code this is the output you are going to get if you run this program in visual studio code this is the output you are going to get so we start by string van one this is a single line string string by two this is also a single line string string by three this is a multi-line string. Then finally we print the class str. Now Python did not just provide you with strings. You should be able to manipulate the strings for one reason or the other. So Python offers some built-in functions for useful string manipulations. We start with the case function. Case operations. There are several case operations. Sometimes you want to change your words from lower case to upper case, upper case to lower case. You want to capitalize the first letter of a name, so on and so forth. These operations are available in Python. Main program begins here. So we say name equal to Leonard Ravenhill. The title method, which is a built in function, changes each word to title case. What does it mean to change each word to title case? That is, each word begins with an uppercase letter. In the Leonard, the L is going to be uppercase, and in the Ravenhill, the arrow is going to be uppercase. So we say print dot title. Now another case function that you can use is the upper method, which changes each word. It doesn't just begin each word with uppercase, it actually changes each word to uppercase. People do that uh, a lot using word processing software like Microsoft Word. You can change everything to caps, everything becomes capital, or you can change everything to small letters, so on and so forth. So in Python, name.upper we change everything to uppercase. Name.lower we change everything to lowercase. If you run this program in Visual Studio Code, this is the output you are going to get. First time, the name, the raw name or original variable name is Leonard Ravenhill. And then we we'll print it out. Print Leonard Ravenhill. And this is the output you have on this side. Exactly the way it is, everything in lowercase. Second time, we say print title so title changes the first letter to uppercase third operation we say print name dot upper changes everything to uppercase and then finally we say name dot lower changes everything back to lowercase other kinds of string operations that you want to do is string concatenation or reporting python provides the F strings, where F stands for format, which is used to insert a variable's value into a string. So we learn how to do that by putting the letter F immediately before the opening quotation mark. Not only F strings, 
You can also perform string concatenation by using the plus, which is similar to Java. Concatenation means you bring one string and another string or several strings to join them together. So you can either use F strings to do it or you can use the plus to do it. We see two examples to show that. So we say first name equal to Leonard, everything small letters. Second name equal to Raven here, everything small letters. Let's perform string concatenation using F. Like I said before, concatenation means joining strings together. So we want to join full name and first name, sorry. We want to join first name and last name into a variable called full name. How do we do that? We just say F, we stand for F string. Then we open the quote. Take the first name, make sure to put it in these braces. Second string, put it in braces. If you have a third string, put it in braces all together. The space you have here will show that is to create a space between the two strings. Finally, close it with another double quote. We can now print full name, which will be Leonard Ravenhill. Everything in small letters again. So let's apply our title built-in function which we learned before and we'll create a reported speech. Hello full name dot title. That is going to print hello Leonard Ravenhill. First letter of each word capitalized. In the same way we could have just created the F string inside a variable, whatever you call it. Equate it to a variable before you print it. So we say message equal to Ola full name dot title. Print message Ola Leonard Ravenhill. That is one way to do string concatenations using the F strings. Another way is to do it using the plus. Just saying we are adding two strings together, joining them. So if we create a different variable and call it reverse name, then we say last name dot title. Put your plus here. Double quotes to create a space between the names. Put your plus here. And finally the last string that you want to add. In fact, you can add as many strings as you want. As long as you are using plus space plus as much as you want. So we can also print it reverse name. Now what can you do with something like this? Imagine you have a shop or a gym and people are subscribing to the gym. You have a page and they are putting their names and their emails there. You want to send a welcome message to all of them, a welcome email. You can sit down and be typing all the emails one by one, putting their email addresses and their names. That's one way you can do it, which is similar to manual labor. Or you can write a, a Python program that automatically takes their name and uh, using, uses an F string, a string concatenation to print a welcome message to all of them. So this is one of the things you can do with string manipulations in Python. So we see the output. First name equal to Leonard, last name equal to Ravenhill, full name equal to first name, last name. So when we printed full name here, we just say first name, last name, Leonard Raven here. We didn't do any case operations. Second time, we created a hello message and we use a case operation which is the title case. So it says hello, Leonard Raven here. L capitalized, R capitalized. We did it again using a variable. F strings Ola full name the title and then we'll print it out and we'll get Ola Leonard Revenue. And finally we created another variable and say we are now trying to use the plus operator instead of F string, which is an alternative way of doing it. Reverse name equal to last name the title plus first name the title and we have Raven Hill Leonard. So one thing you can also do with string operations is either remove or create white spaces 
white spaces are useful for formatting string. What do we mean by white spaces? We see an example to show what we mean by it. First of all, let's learn how to add white spaces. Main program begins here. How do you add white spaces? If you look at the print statement we have there, it is Python notes. There is a white space between Python and notes. It's just a space bar, single space. But sometimes you want to create tabularized data. You want to use tab. You want to create a table. You want your data to be very organized for one reason or another. So you want to use the tab instead of just space on your keypad. You see, if you use space bar to create tabs, you are going to get a very uneven spacing. The best way is to use a tab. So how do you do that in Python? We just say slash t. In programming, we call this escape characters. So we use the white space tab t. It's going to create a tab between Python and notes. Another white space character is to use the new line character, new line white space. The new line escape character slash n means go to the next line. Go to the next line. Go to the next line. So it's going to print languages in the first line, then to go to the next line, it will print Python, go to the next line, it will print C, go to the next line, and it will print JavaScript. So this is another way of creating multi line strings different from the one we learned before. You can combine them. We have languages slash n. Go to the next line, then give a tab space before you print Python. Same thing you do before you print C, same thing you do before you print JavaScript. The output. This is the first space bar. Small white space. This is the tab tab white space. So we came here and we are using the new line white space. Languages, go to the next line, print Python, go to the next line, print C, go to the next line, print JavaScript. In the last one, we combine both new line and tab. Print languages, go to the next line, press tab, print Python, go to the next line, press tab, print C, go to the next line, press tab, print JavaScript. So you can see various ways in which you can be able to organize your printout or your document or your data. We learned how to create white space. Sometimes it is necessary to remove or strip white spaces. For example, for a computer, the word Leonard in this quotation mark that is fully covered it's not the same thing as the word Leonard when there is a space somewhere in between. These white spaces, you want to remove them. So sometimes you have an online application form and people are filling the data. They are filling it anyhow, especially passwords. Spaces are where they are not supposed to be, so on and so forth. As the programmer, you want to organize the data much better. You are either putting white space or you are removing white space. Let's see an example. Name Leonard. You can see the white space here, even though it may not be obvious when, when you print it out because it's not towards the left. If it's on the right, it's not obvious when you print it out. So if we print name, the white space is still there. How do you remove it? Since the white space is to the right, you can see R strip, right strip, left strip or just strip. Print again, the white space has left. The second variable we create is name2. It has a white space on the left and it has a white space on the right. Now when you print this out, you will see that the white space to the left is obvious, but the one to the right is not obvious. There are several ways you can do this to remove them. You can either strip, first we print the name, you can either strip to the left and then strip to the right or you can just say strip if you just say strip if you use only strip 
it is going to remove every white space both to the left and to the right it's up to you let's see the output we get so first time we say name equal to Leonard and then we we'll print name this is where it actually ended but it's not obvious when you print it so we say arrow strip remove the white the white space so this is where it's going to end now even though it's not obvious the second variable is raven here white space to the left and right you see the one to the left is obvious even though it ends here the one to the right is not obvious when we say l strip and print again we have removed the white space from here but this one still remain so eventually when we say r strip and print again both white spaces have been removed from the name so that is all for string data types for the moment you can read the book and see more operations that you can perform now let's talk about numeric data types numbers are natural numeric data types store numbers but there are different types of numbers integers which are the most basic one are whole numbers composed of the numbers 0 to 9 anyway you mix them or combine them together they are integers they don't have a decimal point integer whole numbers are stored in the int class int for integer like I said before we will learn about classes later on then there are floating point numbers which are real numbers also they call them real numbers floating point real is the same thing these are numbers with decimals for example your height the amount of liters of petrol in your tank the number pi the number e that have decimal points on them they are real numbers and they are stored in the real class then we have complex numbers which can contain integers long floats but with the imaginary part and the complex part so this is an integer this is the imaginary part this is a float this is the imaginary float when we say long here we only mean integers that are very long so long is a type of integer the complex numbers are stored in the complex class sometimes when you have very long integers it becomes difficult to read them so you can group them using underscores in Python this is one facility that Python offers which I have not seen in all the other programming languages I've used C, C++, Java, not that I know of if any person knows about that you can just put a comment and let me know for example if we say the universe age 14 billion instead of writing all the 14 billion straight and get a lot of confusing zeros you can just use the underscores to separate them so to Python 1000 is the same thing as 1 underscore 000, which is the same thing as 10 underscore 00, zero or the same thing as 100 underscore 0 is up to you take note underscores in numbers is not a data type it's not a numeric data type it is just a facility that has been provided in Python to enable you write integer data types using underscores to separate them so that it will be easy for people to read I hope that is understood so let's see an example main program begins here we say int norm equal to 1 to 3 this is a numeric integer variable underscore int norm 1 2 3 4 5 6 underscore 7 8 9 0 underscore 1 2 3 underscore 4 5 6 underscore 7 8 9 very large number if you root this integer directly without the underscores someone can easily get confused when trying to copy it but it is also an integer float norm floating point 1.23 complex norm numeric complex variable we can print the types print int norm is of type int norm print underscore int norm is of type it will also be an int 
float norm will be of type float and complex norm will be of type complex so let's see the output you get int norm is of type 1 to 3 is of type class int the second number which is very long is also of type class int float norm is of type class float complex norm is of type class complex now another kind of numeric data type is the boolean data type the boolean store logical values like I said earlier on the value is either true or false so they are covered under the bool class generally zero is regarded as false and any non zero value can be thought of as a true value now this data type is very important because we make decisions a lot programming is logical the computer is a logical machine it was built on boolean algebra true false zero one let's take an example for us to be able to print the type of the boolean variables we have to import boolean so that's why we are using this import here from xml rpc client import boolean because we want to print the type the main program begins here we say boulevard 1 equal to true boulevard 2 equal to false we can also use it to test the result of an operation to see whether it is true or false. Let's try it. We create a, a complex variable and we say a equal to 1 plus 2j. This is not a boolean variable, it is a complex variable. Now let's print the types. Boulevard 1 equal to boulevard is of type. That will be bool. This one will also be boolean. Let's perform a, a test now. We want to know whether A is a Boolean variable. So we say is A a Boolean variable. We are now going to call a built in function. Existence of 1 plus 2j Boolean. What this statement here is reading is is 1.2j an instance of a boolean variable yes or no the value is either going to be true or false as we see in the output definitely false because 1.2j is a complex variable not a boolean variable so what do we get if we look at the output here we start by printing boulevard is of type boulevard 1 is of type boulevard 1 equal to true is of type bool boulevard 2 equal to false is of type bool is 1 plus 2j a boolean variable certainly no so that is a false we've talked about some data types we're going to see more as we progress in the class but before we go let's talk about python operators operators because in programming you need to use operators a lot a computer is a mathematical machine. Everything you do is mathematical operations that are happening. So, operators are special characters used to perform operations on variables, constants, and values or literals. Take note, the word value can be used interchangeably with the word literals. Both of them mean the same things. So, we will talk about operations, we will talk about variables, we have already talked about variables and constants before so we know about them now we will talk about the operations on variables and constants and then we will also talk about values and literals the variables, the constants and the values they are all referred to as operands for example a equal to B plus C is an operation. D 
equal to e minus 5 divided to point 0.1 is also an operation, arithmetic operation. What are the operators there? The operators are equal to is an operator, plus is an operator, minus is an operator, divide is an operator. So these are the operators. What are the operands? The first operand are the variables. The variables are things that their values can change along the program depending on what input you have you put inside them. A is a variable, B is a variable, C is a variable, D is a variable, E is a variable. What about the literals or values? 5 is a literal or a value, 2.1 is a literal value. The variables and the constants and the values or literals are referred to as the operands, which are operated upon by the operators. So we say the operands are variables and values and constants inclusive also. Operations can either be binary, in which case there are two or more operands upon which the operator is acting on. For instance, this operator plus here is acting on B and C, so we say it is a binary operation. It can also be unary, in which case there is only one operand. So this operator minus here is acting on 10 alone. We call this a unary operation. Types of operators. Arithmetic operators relational operators for comparison, assignment, logical, bitwise, set membership, identity, and then we can think about operator precedence, meaning which of the operators should you use first when you are performing a calculation, like board mass in mathematics. So, Python has given us a plethora of operators which we can use. Most popular is the addition operator, which we have been using, and the syntax is z equal to x plus y. Subtraction, multiplication, division, floor division, which you may not use at all, modulus, which you may use frequently or sometime. Modulus gives you the reminder of the division and exponentiation which we have been using in our quadratic equation for example b square b raised to the power of 2 is b star star 2 then there are the relational operators that return a true or false result which we have also been using since first is the greater than x is greater than y will be true if x is greater than y false otherwise x less than y greater than or equal to less or equal to equal to is x equal to y and not equal to is x not equal to y all of this will return true or false then we have the augmented assignment if you want to perform an incremental or recursive operation on x, let's say you want to increment x by y, x equal to x plus y, you can write it in a shorthand form just like this. x plus equal to y means the same thing. x equal to x minus y is the same thing as x minus equal to y. x equal to x multiplied by y is the same thing as x star equal to y. Same goes for divide, same goes for floor division, same goes for modulus, same goes for exponentiation. Then there is the logical operators. Logical and returns true if x and y are true. Z can only be true if x and y are true. Z will be true if x is true or y is true. Either one of them is true, Z will be true. The only time Z will not be true is if both of them are false. 
z not y is a negation if y is true z is false if y is false z is true and then we have the bitwise operations which you may not use frequently but when you start learning about computer architecture and logic design you will find this very useful and in some other areas of application like cryptography or something so x and y a string of bits x or y we call it bitwise or x or y which is the exclusive or unary bitwise not bitwise shift left bitwise shift right all these topics are very important in low level programming which we will not do as a part of this course so Python also provides set membership operations we want to know whether a variable X is inside a list Y we also want to know whether a variable X is not inside a list Y identity operator we want to validate whether two objects share the same memory location in another way we want to prove whether two things are the same for instance we got the picture of a person that is stored on the computer and we capture the picture of a person from a camera so we pair them together are they the same if x is y it will return true if x is not y it will return false and this is the opposite operation comments before we go we cannot overemphasize the importance of comments in programming the basic comment in Python is any statement preceded by the hashtag that's not all you can also create multi-line comments which is similar to creating multi-line strings what makes it different is we did not equate it to any variable before we put the first triple quotes otherwise it would have been a multi-line string comments are important helps to describe parts of a program for better understanding they are parts of the documentation of a program and they help multiple programmers to collaborate on a project finally before we go Tim Peters advised us on the Zen of Python how to write beautiful error-free programs it's like a poem so we are going to see the Zen of Python before going this is the Python command prompt which we have not been using you can actually use the command prompt to be typing your programs one by one it's just that they are not saved so we have left the presentation we are now in Visual Studio Code if your terminal is not open already just click on view and click on terminal so your terminal opens now we want to go into the Python console we just type Python see the three children is now appearing you can type your commands here all the programs we wrote could have been typing it one by one and pressing enter here and they will still run so if we say import this to tell us the Zen of Python and we press enter this is what you get the Zen of Python by Tim Peters Google Tim Peters and know his role in Python okay. the main test book for for the course still remains the book of Eric Mathis but a lot of the operators which are listed in this topic are from this Python programming for beginners the ultimate beginners guide AMZ publishing you can check it out on Google and the other books still remain for your references so we've come to the end of the class today if you have enjoyed the lecture please like share and subscribe for more videos thank you and see you in the next class